Welcome to the Brothers Comics of. Hi everybody, Nick Rock Lobster here, and as always, I am joined by my brother, Eddie, not Rock Lobster. You could just, I think not lobster sounds better. The not Rock Lobster, it's too many syllables. I don't think I it fits. Guess. It's, but you're Lobster, I'm not Rock Lobster. You're Nick Rock Lobster. So Nick Rock Lobster, Eddie, not. Eddie, not Rock Lobster. Eddie Rock, not Lobster? That is just nonsense now. Right, this like, is... It's just gibberish coming out of your face. Anyways, let's get back on track. I don't know how much of that is going to be in there, but there's been a lot of infighting tonight. There hasn't so been far. infighting. There's been, there's been misunderstanding mm. on someone's part. Mm. There has been um, lack of priorities on mm-hmm. someone's part. Yeah, Ryan's. Um, uh, I was mm. gonna say, no, let's not. You're let's gonna not say get who? Again. You're gonna say who? We don't what have are my priorities? Again, okay, your priorities are your D and D game over me finding a wedding venue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You have over a year. You're not. What the, why the fuck you got? Our your... dates are already. Our dates are already booking up. We already can't get our date at four different venues, and it's really? over a year and a half. Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. Anyways, today. We discussed Neil Gaiman, Sandman. Sandman. Yes. Preludes so, and um, Nocturnes, Volume pre- 1. Preludes and Nocturnes, Volume 1. Um, just as a note for everybody watching. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody what happened? Uh, this is our second time recording this episode because Discord was being stupid and it That's didn't cool. record properly. You're not even doing anything. You're not recording. You're not editing. You ain't shit, bro. I'm here. I'm here. I'm bringing you viewers is what I'm doing. Since you posted the first episode, I had no idea. It just suddenly the first episode was posted. And then what happened? Immediately, your views went through the roof compared through to... Through the roof. Compared okay. to what else? You, you no. had nine views in an hour. Second time recording the episode because it didn't record last time. Right. Um, additionally, we also mention, yeah, yeah, I'm getting, I'm, let me do it. I'm trying to help. Okay. Excuse me. I'm not well, you're not, help. you're not, uh, you're, oh, that's your helping. That's right. your form of helping. Right. Eddie told me the wrong book. I did not. And, and I wound up Go reading the footage. I wound up, I'll, I'll, I'll play the it. tapes. He, I'll play the tapes. Like the one about you out. eating babies. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So editor. I, I'm not. Oh, like crazy editor. Okay, got yes, it. crazy mad. Um, I guess I'm also kind of mad in general. But uh, the book I read is the first four books of Sandman in one, and I didn't realize it. So yeah, I read about four times more than I needed to, and it's been a while since we've read it because we haven't been able to record again. And this will be a shit show. I'm sure it'll be a shit show. It'll be but a shit show. you know, the last one was a shit show, and we didn't even mean for it to be. It just ended up being. A it shit just kind of happened, though. Um, it just kind of happened that it was a shit show. Part of it was because it was hard to focus on, because you know, again, Nick read it was like with Department of Truth, how he read the second book, and then he couldn't talk about just the first one. I imagine that, but like time four. That's what this last episode was. So it was a little bit of a shit show. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise that it was, you know, bungled. But the um, but this time again, it has been a little while since we've read this. Now I'd say it's been like a week and a half at least. Since oh, at least, book. at least. So, um, but let's you know, not dilly dally. Let's not go. Although I, I I feel bad that we lost the tangent about the Eddies dying. Eddie always yeah, dies. I know. You know what? We'll come back to that. We'll we come back we'll, to we'll, it. We won't do it in this one. We'll do it. Not, we'll do yeah. it coming up. There's there's something. There'll be, a, there'll be an occasion for it. So. Yes, it'll come up. Um. 
So I guess first uh, you want to break down the summary of book yeah, one, I mean, kind of the plot. So basically in a very, very, you know, 30 stories view, um, I don't know what the saying is. It's not like 3,000 view. Um, I about, have no uh, idea what turn of phrase From above, how you're seeing to. it from like a 3,000 foot point of view, you know what I mean? So you're seeing like the bigger picture. I've it's a saying, I probably got that. the number wrong. I've yeah. never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's uh, so basically, some old guy tries to summon death. Instead, he summons Morpheus, uh, Sandman, and keeps him in prison for like a hundred years. Then he gets out. He's got to track down all his goodies that went and got stolen and shit. And it's all about him getting his three relics of power essentially back, which uh, are the course of this first graphic novel, which are the bag of sand, mm-hmm. um, the mask, mm-hmm. and the gem. Okay, yes, but please, it's a helm. Refer to it as a helm, a mask. The helm, I it is apologize. A helm. It is like a full metal It's a full link. boom. It, it turns him immediately into like a Clive Barker creation. Yeah. 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 I was thinking um, kind of Geiger. Ga- Geiger. Yeah, Geiger. it's very Geiger. I was thinking. I was thinking Geiger. Yeah. Um, but Barker and Geiger were, you know, the same, yeah. very similar styles. But um, Very similar. It's, uh, I, I prefer them without it, but... Uh, I one of the things that I think was most interesting, and this is also said from a thousand yard view, um, is that uh, it's in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. So you actually get like a lot of DC characters throughout the course of this thing, such as uh, John Constantine, Martian Manhunter. They show a, a shot of the uh, old school Sandman, the JSA mm-hmm. Sandman, the Wesley Dodd Sandman. Um, they have flashes of Granny Goodness, Scott Free. Uh, they just use a ton of people throughout the course of this. Even uh, 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 Lucifer, who of course is the basis of the other TV show on Fox, Lucifer. So it's the same character, but they they that's also set in the DC universe, and they include them in this one as well. And so it's interesting. I didn't realize getting into it. I knew it was owned by DC. I didn't realize. How- how integrated it was with a lot of the DC universe. I and wasn't so, expecting that either. I, I knew I it was, I knew it was DC. Um, I figured because of the darker tone of it, they wouldn't incorporate too much. Right. It's um, not like you see Morpheus showing up in other DC books for the most part. I'm sure there right. are people out there who are going to be, we're going to get all sorts of comments in the YouTube section about being like, Oh no, this one and this one, and this no. is where he showed up. But um, I'm assuming our popularity here, of course, but uh, I think that, so therefore I wasn't expecting them to show up in his mm-hmm. to, to be as integrated as it was. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I wasn't expecting it. Like when that first, that very first panel, they're talking about the gem and um, I think it was Dr. Destiny had it and the justice league or justice society. I don't know which it was at the time. Uh, took the gem away from Dr. Destiny and they showed like Batman and, and shit and i was surprised um once constantine showed up i i i might have known constantine was in it or that he appeared in the series but if anybody from the dc universe is gonna show up it's gonna be constantine yeah Yeah, for sure and uh i mean constantine's my boy he's one of my favorites i think i own more hellblazer books than no i have more x-men but hellblazer's close second um, Which is funny because we've got that buddy who cosplays as uh, Constantine all the time. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, he does, very does well. a good job. Yeah. Known for it. Yeah. Um, but uh, overall, I thought that it was. I'm going to give my overall thought to it because it was. This isn't going to be like last uh, last episode where I said, "Oh, you know, it's brilliantly written, but it's not my thing." I didn't think it would be my thing, and I thought the artwork would bug me. For some reason, I thought the artwork was different than it is. Mm-hmm. I thought the artwork was very watercolor, very Department of Truth. In actuality, it's not. It's super no. clear and super clean, and exactly kind of like how I like my artwork to look. I so think you were it, thrown off by the covers because the probably. covers have that kind of watercolor paint might that, look to it. Yeah. I know that my buddy uh, Logan wanted me to read this forever, and that's why I actually have a copy. It's mm-hmm. his that he left me. 
So I I genuinely enjoyed all this. It is darker than I usually like to go, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the darker stuff sometimes. You know what I mean? And this was this was very enjoyable darker stuff. I it helps that it also integrated because it makes it part of a bigger universe for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I, I enjoy big universe stuff. So that that was very cool. And it there were parts of it that got a little too that went a little too shock value for me. And even Neil Gaiman has said that there's some stuff that he as a writer, he's gotten his writing style has changed. That there are things he would go back and and change about what he did back when he wrote this when he was younger. And that's you know we're obviously talking about twenty four hours, the John D stuff, yeah, the John D stuff. And so uh, that went a little bit far for me in some places. It was a little bit unnecessarily shock value, I think, for for some of it. But overall, I I can't wait to read more. No, I um. The John D stuff was probably my favorite stuff. I don't know why. Uh, it just... I liked that character and that kind of creepy. That's probably the most it went horror, was the John D stuff. Um, overall, I, I really liked it. I think the story was very Gaiman. Um, and we're both big Gaiman fans. I mean, yeah. we have been forever. Uh, American yeah, Gods. American Gods, one of our favorites, absolutely. Um, and it, it felt very Gaiman... Although- Hmm. Much like Sandman, I still have yet to see the American God show. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> um, I have the first season. I just haven't watched it. I've heard mixed things. I know yeah. that they make changes to it that seem kind of... But they kind of have to because it's a show. Yeah, of course. I get it. But um, the story felt very in his kind of oeuvre. It did. And yeah. uh, I liked that. Where are you setting your cup because it keeps bumping something that's going like oh i'm sorry i'll be quieter when i put it down okay you do that by the way i was i wanted to make the uh, episode 24 hours my eddie's batman glass talking point of the episode oh okay and tonight i'm enjoying a delicious old-fashioned that's not what this is this isn't a drink show i know that this isn't eddie's it's no, that like, was just my Oh, this episode's point. brought to you by fucking an old fashioned. Did I say a, a company name? Did I say a, a, no. a specific product name? No, I just said it was an old fashioned out of my Batman glass because Eddie's Batman glass talking point of the episode. That's okay. all I was saying. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Um, I thought I liked the kind of. Um, I don't know. It almost felt like a video game. With the three yeah. things that the it was, thing to yeah, for it. the yeah. three very distinct quests that he had: I, I go think, get the sand, go get yeah. the helm, go get the gem. I liked that format. Me too. I I think I compared it last time to the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, where it was like each one was like a different quest, like short little uh, mini uh, storylines, mini arcs to be able to get these these items to all come back together. So it was you did. You did make yeah. that comparison last episode. Glad you felt the need to do it again. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because last episode was lost for some reason. Um, and so, yeah, ultimately, I really like that, too. And I like how it kind of, like, it ended when he's kind of, like, whole again. You know what I mean? At least the yeah. first book ended when he was kind of, like, whole again with all of his stuff. And so it kind of, like, here's how we can move on. This was very much an origin story for us and him. Mm-hmm. And it did a, a lot of... Um, the world building was good, kind of introducing you to like the weird sisters and Lucifer mm-hmm. and um uh God, it's been so long I can't remember the names. His like right hand man person and the dreamlands. Um Oh, the like butler. The guy, butler person. The house, I can't the remember house, the name. Um but I think that Cain and Abel was kind of silly. But yeah, it felt a little out of place. Off and weird. I don't um, understand really what they were doing. Well, because they're in DC. Yeah, they're, they're know, House of Mysteries. Felt, yeah. It and yeah. I I got it because I mean they showed up in um, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. That's where I know That's them right. best from. Is they right. were in that. Um, so I think it was just him kind of integrating characters more. Odd choice. Yeah, in my opinion, I mean, I didn't yeah. mind it that much, but it did feel kind of out of place. Yeah. Um, I also thought uh, Zernabog or whatever the demon from hell that's yeah. like a punk rocker 
that yeah. felt weird. Like, why are you weird putting... and cartoony? And yeah, I mean, it was already kind of weird having uh, you know Bills above and Azazel there as or Azrael, whatever. Um, there is those weird demon creature things that already mm-hmm. felt like kind of cartoony and like yeah. weird over the top kind of. It just uh, felt twisted, the but... the demon felt weird in like such a yeah. serious kind of a darker serious sort of drama, and then here's this fucking flat out cartoon character that looks like a sea monkey. I yeah, didn't really like get the we answer point. Cool World. Right. Nothing against yeah. Cool World, because I love Cool World. Of course not. We love Cool World. It's amazing. <laughs> Ralph Bakshi. <Bokshin. laughs> Legend. But um it was it definitely kind of took me out of it because yeah. it was very, very against the tone that they had already kind of established. It it went from dark, creepy, fun dark, creepy and intriguing to like colorful over the top and i picture a goofy guitar riff behind him like yeah it's like what right. I, I no no don't do that um no, I... but then it's i liked the format but i feel like the john d one is the one that stood out the most not just because of the shock value but it felt like it had more going on like the constantine yeah. section was cool because it was constantine and I guess the idea of that ex-girlfriend of his getting addicted to the powder or the sand was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. But it's at just, the end of the day, it kind of it it's not very memorable. It's just kind of no, okay. And it felt like a again, it felt like a choice. It felt like a shock choice. You know? What yeah, I mean? a little Where bit. Like, how far can I push this element? You know what I mean? To make people either uncomfortable or to just make it so they don't see it coming. And right. just because it's out there, nobody would do it. And it's, it felt, it felt a little pretentious, but it, it was kind of, let's see, let me just show how it, there was an immaturity to it. I think. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. And so, that, where that it, I not felt what I get from a lot of gaming now, you know? Right. And I, I felt that in that first story and then the story with Zernabog or whatever, that felt yeah. cheesy and weird. Like John D felt like the only segment that took itself seriously. Exactly. Even That's though, the thing is that it was over the top and dark and weird, but it, it didn't, it wasn't wacky. Yeah. No, there was nothing wacky about no. that segment. And I kind of, it, it was just a weird balance. Like I still liked all, all of it. And I liked the additional shit I read that I didn't mean to, but it, that, first book with those three segments it it did have kind of a balancing issue where some of it felt goofy some of it felt very not goofy um and i that that levels out a bit more in the future but in that first book it did feel a little unbalanced in my opinion yeah so artwork we kind of already touched on it a little bit i really like the artwork i think it was pretty stellar work too i think it it was it it was right on the verge of it was somewhere between classic bright sharp imaged comic books you know what i mean from like the mm-hmm. 80s or 90s but it also like it it had its own unique dark tint to it almost you know what i mean it was just a little bit more bordering on the dark artistic side without it being distracting yes and that's what i that's what I, I have a problem with when it comes to all the watercolor stuff like Department of Truth. It feels distracting. This artwork was not distracting at all. I didn't have to try to interpret what I was seeing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't see what I was seeing. Right. And that's that's a lot of that. I know it's very basic stuff, you know what I mean? And it's it's not an over the artistic eye or anything, but for me I want to be able to see what I'm 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 looking at without having to study and interpret it. Right. And that's what this gave me. It gave me a it, it was a good good just off the mark for it to be unique. Yes, it it I, you kind of took the words right out of my mouth. It has a very classic aesthetic to it, but it's creative and unique enough to stick out in your mind. Like there are yes. there are images from that first book that are in my head. Like one in yeah. particular, it's the John D segment where they're like holding him up on their shoulders like he's the, I think he even has god written across his chest. Yeah. And the woman's putting the blood up to his lips like the the art style of that was I thought very well done and very um attention grabbing without being overly stylized. Like yeah, here we go. That like just the the lines yeah. it's very the lines on the face and the hair it's very EC comics. Uh, very Bernie Wrightson. Yeah, it was very easy. Yeah, 
Um, I think they did a really good job with that, but it, it's those things, but it's also its own thing. Like it very much, you can see its influences without being distracted by them. And I, uh, throughout the whole thing, I thought the, the artwork worked really well. There's a, a splash page in hell, uh, that I have in my head too, that I thought was really, really cool looking. Exactly. Yeah, that about. one there. Like, just there's so much. I've been picturing it the whole time that we've been talking about yeah. it. Yeah, me too. There's so much going on there without being distracting. Little details mm-hmm. that you can pick up on. Yeah, I, I really, I appreciated the art in this one a lot. Yeah, no, I did too. Um, I wanted to go, want to go for the uh, our MVP of the book. VIP. We keep saying VIP. MVP. I think it's VIP. VIP. Yeah, I guess it would be VIP. Because I think that's what my little banner graphic says. So we gotta. We gotta okay, stick I think it might be right. You're right. Um, and yes, the VIP of the book I think is uh, usually I go with somebody kind of like off the cuff or somebody you know kind of like a right hand man or something like that. But in this or a bad guy, that's kind of cool. For this one, it, it has to be Morpheus. Morpheus is just the VIP for this book, and and I don't usually do that because obviously they're the main character, they're the very importantest person in the book. But in this case, I really do see him as being like the one that you're like actively cheering behind him. You you feel for him the most, in my opinion, other than anybody else. I mean, yeah, John D is obviously also a very standout character. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But for me, it was they they did a good job of telling all these characters. But for me, Morpheus was a. Uh, Somebody who I felt like I could, I was intrigued by and rooting for. Mm-hmm. I um, I want to say John D. That's my knee jerk. Um, also, the John D. stuff had my boy Scarecrow in it, he, only for a little yes. bit. But I did have to throw out. He's my favorite comic book character ever, and he was in it. And aces to that. And I mm-hmm. want to say John D. But I think you're right in this instance. It has to be Morpheus because I, I I do find in a lot of things in particular comic books the main character isn't the most interesting to me by no, any it's the thing is that yeah the most it's, relatable one isn't necessarily the one i'm going to enjoy like i don't read batman so books for batman thing. no i, I don't either. i don't read story. batman for batman i don't read superman for superman i don't yeah. read those books for the person it's all the people around them but in yeah. this morpheus is such an interesting and realized character that mm-hmm. he he's mysterious enough that you don't know everything about him and you want to learn more, but he's personified so well that you get who Morpheus is. And I, I, I really like that. I thought that was done really well. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the casting. I know we talked about it a little bit last time and it was going to be hard with the show and everything for the mm-hmm. casting. So I had to pick somebody who, I had to try to ignore all that, and and I didn't try to go even for a modern, you know, version of them. But like, I was thinking for John D. Um, I'm sure I haven't seen it yet. But I'm sure David Thewlis does. I'm sure David Thewlis kills it. Absolutely, but um, it, but thought, before oh, you say cool anything, one. he didn't. Lo- he doesn't look the part no. in the in any of the posters well, or still can frames really I've seen. Look the part for right, that. it would have to be a full makeup job yeah. if you were going to do I don't a think true. That's right. I like. I like the take that they did on it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I've seen the stills and stuff, and I'm cool with it. Yeah. I keep picturing in my head uh, Matt Frewer. Trash Can Man. Yeah, I love that. Max Hedrum. I know. I think he would would be fantastic as... I would put Matt Frewer in anything. Yeah, no, I love Matt Frewer. Matt Frewer is my choice. I can't even compete with that. Because I, oh, I'm trying to remember what I said last episode. I don't remember what my choice was. I didn't put enough thought into it coming into it. Because now I don't even yeah. know. Because Morpheus, it's it's really hard. And I, full disclosure, I watched the first episode. Um, reading the comic, I'm like, nobody can play Morpheus. Like, he's just, there's something Timothy about Solomon him. be kind of cool. Yeah, he doesn't have... I, there's something about his features. I, I almost want to say, like, fucking... Um, like, not Mick Jagger, but, like, Keith Richards. Like, young Keith The big lips, the big nose. He has very, very kind of big features. Um, but also kind of angular at the same time. I don't know. It's an, It's strange to me. But reading it, I was like, nobody can play him. 
And then I watched that first episode and just his personification, his voice, the way, like, nice. that motherfucker is Morpheus. And yeah. that makes it hard because I don't even know that he's the one I would cast. I would probably cast John D. too. That- Fucking the, the old guy. Um, In the beginning? I, yes. I can't think right, of his you name. you did pick somebody. I didn't, but I just time, thought I of one. Oh, okay. I, oh, I just thought of one. Charles Dance is excellent. In the show. I'm not going to say he's not. David Warner. Oh, that'd be cool. David Warner, like, playing David him, Warner he would have he would have like killed that. it. Yeah. Mmm. Got one. At the at the fucking finish line. That's a damn good one, too. Yeah, I think he would he would have done a really good job with that. And I yeah. love I love me, David Warner. It's it's R.I.P. Yeah. Oh. Cool. And speaking of I might have another casting. Which is gonna bum us both out when I say it, but um, Morpheus Julian Sands, yeah, would have been Sands. a really good he, uh, Julian Sands. Yeah, in his in his fucking right, Julian Sands now would have been a good John D, and Julian Sands uh, back in the true. day would have been a good Morpheus, and now he's been missing for two weeks. Yeah, uh, how, it's kind of crazy that nobody's really talking about. Nobody is Julian talking Sands about this missing for two weeks. I I I'm very concerned that he's not with us anymore, and that that really well, yeah, fucking bums me point. out. That's so yeah. sad. And yeah. he he's he was underrated, but also he was big enough that people should be fucking talking yeah. about this, and they're not, yeah. and it upsets me. And he was acting, you know, recently too. You yeah, know? And he's he, still appearing and stuff all the time. You I know? He, uh, last thing I think I saw him on was Gotham, which was yeah, a while was ago. Scarecrow's dad in Gotham, but still. Um. But yeah, he's he's a fucking legend, yeah. and uh, I think he would have been a good Morpheus or a good John D, depending on what time frame what you're age. talking about. Yeah, exactly. No, that's very true. Um, so, so yeah, those are my pick: David Warner as cool. the fucking old guy mm-hmm. and young Julian, Julian Sands. Sands as Morpheus. Nice, I like it. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be reading the second. Uh, next couple hopefully graphic novels to this because i'm intrigued and i also want to read them before i watch the show just so i can be disappointed in the show because that's how it works right um although i keep hearing that the fans are not disappointed but i've heard they're not they made a couple changes in the beginning um that i'm not sure how i feel about uh with um i don't want to say who but yeah there's it's Um, what i only saw the one episode and i liked it so Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I know that it covers I think the first two graphic novels, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna at least read those and so I can watch the show, but I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And then uh yeah, I think that's that kind of covers it for this one. Yeah. Um, In and out, speedy. Yeah. Got to the do. point. Nice and effective. Yeah. Um I think that the next one we're gonna end up doing is Scud, right? Scud the disposable assassin. Yeah. Uh Scud. the whole we're reading the whole shebang. Hopefully yes. it's not overwhelming. Um, it's very big. We've got a lot of things in the pipeline, so yeah. so hopefully, I mean, I don't, we can't guarantee and commit to doing one of these every week, but we will be continuing to put out content for sure. So it's just going to be, you know, as we can go through and get them read, and you know, we've got a couple in the bag already, so you know, we'll be releasing them as we go. But we're, uh, yeah, we got we got a bunch of stuff up and coming. So until yeah. then, uh, read and he comments. always dies. Oh, we're doing. No, we're doing more comics. And cut.